J'ai cru que tu rentrais en prison, tu allais comprendre un peu. It's survival of the fittest for med students in French film The Freshman. Life on the mean streets of Marseille is the subject of Scheherazade and Texan tragedy comedy Thunder Road scoops a prize at the Deauville Film Festival. Thanks for joining us here on Encore. Our film critic Lisa Nesselson is also with us to take us through the week's releases. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Olivia. Now, we're starting with a film that plunges us into French institutions, which is topical because at the moment uh, President Macron wants to change some of them. One of the targets could be the incredibly competitive system for getting into med school and freshmen this film tackles just that tackling what it uh, takes to get into that university course is it a comedy a drama or perhaps even a horror film <laughs> well i was educated in the u.s and the french university system is so well foreign to me uh, that after the press screening i had to ask french colleagues is this the way it really works because it just seemed i was in shock about the heartless brutality <laughs> of it all they assured me that yes this is is absolutely how it works, and the writer-director uh, Thomas Lidli should know because he's a physician himself, and this is his third fictional feature about being a doctor. Première année starts with a few hundred young people sitting in a lecture hall. I had no idea what was going on. One by one, they're called to sign a form saying whether they want to study to be a doctor, a pharmacist, or a dentist. There are strict quotas on how many people will be accepted to study to be physicians, and once all the slots are taken, you have to decide on the spot whether you're going to study pharmacology or dentistry instead, even if what you've wanted your whole life is to be a doctor doctor. And that's the case of one of the film's two protagonists, Antoine, very well played by Vincent Lucos. Now, he has taken this grueling entrance exam twice, gotten this far, but there are no more doctor slots available. So he declines entirely and decides to give it a third and final shot. He wants to be a doctor, but he's from a modest background, and so he has no social advantages to draw on. But he meets Benjamin, a first-time candidate from a well-to-do family family, whose own father's a doctor. Benjamin knows how to study the same things that require enormous effort for Antoine, who's commuting from the burbs, uh, come relatively easily to Benjamin. Now, non-French viewers will probably find Benjamin bland and uncharismatic to the point of tedium, which makes it hard to root for him to get one of the 132 doctor slots out of 2,300 candidates. You heard that right. And weirdly, a medical education in France is just about free once you get in, so graduates can afford to do good and be general practitioners, and they're not forced to go into specialties like uh, plastic surgery because they have to pay back a quarter of a million or half a million dollars in student loans, as is often the case in the U.S. But that first year here is studying, cramming, sleep deprivation, memorizing, and studying some more with that one exam determining the rest of your life. Sounds very grueling, and indeed it looks like everything boils down to whether or not you do well in tests, which suggests that France could be rewarding people who don't crack under pressure on exam day more than perhaps those with a medical disposition. Well, judge for yourself, here's the director and a glimpse of the film. Are these students those who will become the best doctors? Are their grades representative of their quality as a doctor? The movie clearly shows it's not the case. Ça fait environ deux minutes par question. Donc à ce rythme-là, c'est impossible de réfléchir, soit on répond par réflexe reptilien, soit au hasard. Donc je pense que les meilleurs, enfin ceux qui deviendront médecins, se rapprochent plus du reptile que de l'être humain. Now, this film's subtle exploration of those French social codes that tend to perpetuate the elites may not be obvious to non-French viewers, but I think this is going to be a fabulous release for getting that conversation going about the whole educational system here in France. And it may inspire a new respect for doctors. Now, we're moving from the medical profession to a job, job often referred to as the oldest uh, trade in the world, <laughs> a young prostitute and her pimp feature in our next film, Scheherazade. Now, this Scheherazade is a first film that should not work, but absolutely does. It has an endearing cast of non-professionals, and it's set in Marseille. It recently won several awards at the French Language Film Festival held in Angoulême and received five out of five or four out of five possible stars from 22 of the 26 most prominent French publications, and it absolutely warrants that attention. 17-year-old Zachary is released from a spell in juvenile detention. All he wants to do is go back home and live with his mother. But his mom, who obviously 
obviously had him really, really young, isn't the least bit interested in having him under her roof. She's not what you'd call loving or supportive. And the young actor, Dylan Robert, is so sincere, we immediately side with him. So looking for a prostitute to celebrate his newfound freedom, he meets a fellow teenager with the extravagant name of Shahrazad. She's tough and smart, and she gives him a hard time. We sense their youthful chemistry. She shares a studio apartment with a transgender friend who also happens to hook for a living. One thing leads to another, and Zachary ends up handling their professional appointments. Let's take a look. J'ai cru que tu rentrais en prison, tu allais comprendre un peu. Mon frère, tu es sorti que dans encore plus qu'on qu'avant. Tu as vu ce terrain Maintenant, c'est à nous. Well, this does sound a bit like a story that's been told before. So what makes the telling of this one so special? Well, it's shot with irresistible verve. Uh, I think we're in the presence of a gifted storyteller who found the perfect cast. The director spent months doing research in the Rotonde Quarter of Marseille, and everything rings true. In fact, the actor who plays Zachary, well, he's an actor now, just three months before they started shooting, that had been him. He was getting out of juvenile prison. This is the kind of low-budget, unpretentious, and affecting French film that gives me incredible hope for the the future of film going in France. Ah, a slice of real life here in France. Well, next, we're moving to something quite different. You were in the Normandy resort town at the beginning of the month for the 44th edition of the Deauville Film Festival, which celebrates cinema from your home country, the <laughs> United States. Now, the film that won the grand prize there is in French theatres this week. It's called Thunder Road, just like the Bruce Springsteen song. Now, would the boss approve? Ah, well, you know, he just might. Uh, Jim Cummings, who wrote, produced, directed, and stars in this film, expanded this first feature from an award-winning short film in which he played a Texas policeman uh, whose mother has died and who, among other questionable activities brought on by grief, uh, goes ahead and plays Bruce Springsteen's Thunder Road at her funeral. Now, Cummings didn't actually take the crucial step of clearing the rights, but apparently the boss liked the short film and donated the Massive song. risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is one of those instances when the vast majority of people around me genuinely like a movie and I just don't get why they're so enthusiastic. But the audiences in Deauville and the jury definitely thought the story of Jimmy Arno, a divorced cop, trying to help raise his daughter while freaking out over the aftermath of his mother's death is a tragic comedy that lends itself to both laughter and tears. I thought it lent itself to me checking my watch regularly, but judge for yourself. You grow up, you think about your mom and your dad and the stories that they used to tell you. You were growing up of them being young and and before I called her mom, she was Brenda. Sorry, uh, I don't know if I can keep going. That's cool. I'm fine. So according to the reviews on the aggregation site Rotten Tomatoes, this film has a 100% fresh rating. You did mention tragedy comedy, and it does seem that the humour comes from the very sad situations that Cummings creates. That's exactly right. Uh, this character, Jimmy Arno's own childhood was flawed, and so he really wants to be a really good dad, uh, but his wife is suing for divorce and sole custody. He doesn't want to badmouth her because, well, she's the mother of his child. Cummings uses long, long takes to up the ante. I found this character way more annoying than touching, but while waiting in line in the Deauville grocery store, just to give you an idea, I actually overheard three young French women just marveling about how much they had all enjoyed the film. An American couple, older, who live in Arles, and recognized me in the lobby from Fred's 24 told me they think this guy is as good as Jerry Lewis or the next Jerry Lewis. I just don't see it, but others do. So if you enjoyed the excerpts we've shown you, you may get more out of this movie than I did. Okay, potentially divisive comedy. Now we're finishing with a film from 1932, arguably the golden age of Hollywood. One Hour With You has been restored and is re-released in France this week. It comes in at just over an hour, in fact. <laughs> it's not one hour, it's one hour and 15 minutes. Will we be looking at our watches on this one? There won't be time, and you won't want to, because this was directed by the great Ernst Lubitsch. Now, I don't use the term great 
lightly, but he was a brilliant director with a sense of comic timing, which is called to this day the Lubitsch Touch. Now, this film and musical was made in 1932, and so prior to when the Dread Hayes Production Code laid down a set of rules so strict about what could and could not be put on the silver screen that the Walt Disney Studios had to remove the udders from their cartoon cows. <laughs> We're talking about the effect of animated drawings on the nation's morals. Why is that? Because that's where cows store their milk and human women store their milk in their breasts and the Hayes Code was nervous about breasts. I'm not making this up. Boy, did that pendulum swing. Pre-code, it was perfectly okay to have a movie where Maurice Chevalier plays a gynecologist who adores women but is determined to remain absolutely faithful to his wife. His best wife, his wife's best friend, however, uh, has designs on The Good Doctor and the film is flippant and funny about marital fidelity. The director's masterpiece is, of course, Nonochka, starring Greta Garbo, but this is a fun way to spend 75 minutes in the dark. Okay, some vintage comedy there. Thank you very much for joining us, Lisa, this week. We'll leave you with a very short snippet from Ernst Lubitsch's One Hour With You. Remember, you can get more movie news, arts and culture on our website. Do stay with us here on France 24. There's more news coming up after this. If I have to examine you, let me see your tongue. No, that's not the way to start. Put your head against my heart. Oh. oh, monsieur, you're conceited. Oh, madame, I am married. Looking forward to a very happy Christmas.